This video is made possible by the fantastic Sunward Hobbies. Please stay tuned to the end of this video for more information about this amazing store. Hello everyone, Rebels of Cloud9 here, and today I'm going to be building the Tamiya 148 scale F4U-1D Corsair with Mototug. I built Tamiya's F4U-2 a few years ago, and ever since then I've wanted to build another one. When I found this kit for sale, I immediately bought it as I was thinking the Mototug would be a great addition to the model, and I really like the idea of building this Corsair with the wings up. There are three decal schemes included with this kit for various aircraft from different carriers. As well, you get a driver for the Mototug, as well as a really cool pilot to be seated in the Corsair. I started by working on the cockpit section. Since this model was going to be posed with a seated pilot and the canopy open, I wanted to add some extra details to the interior. I drilled out three small holes under each of these consoles. And then I placed wire into each of these holes with Mr. Just Super Glue. I was able to remove the excess glue with a cotton bud. The throttle control section is just too small, so I removed the details and I decided I was going to be building a better one. I then placed some tape over the throttle section and traced around the shape with a marker. I cut some styrene sheets and glued them together in the thickness that I wanted for the controls. Then I placed the tape onto the block and cut and sanded away the plastic until I had the correct shape. I used thin styrene to create the various levers. And for the rounded knobs, I'm dabbing on to the tips with clear canopy glue. The interior sections were painted with Mr. Color's Zinc Chromate Green, and after the paint had dried, I sprayed on a gloss coat. To help the buttons stand out from the flat black, I painted them with Vallejo Black Gray. And for the red sections, I use Formula P3 Cador Base Red. I used the kit supplied decals for the instrument panel. Once the decals were in place, I brushed on a good amount of Tamiya Mark Fit Super Strong Decal Solvent to help the decals conform to the surface details. Once all of the interior details were painted, I sprayed on a gloss coat, and then I brushed Tamiya Panel Line Accent Colored Dark Brown all over the cockpit sections. For the black sections of the cockpit, I painted on Tamiya Panel Line Accent Color Gray. This watch was excellent at pooling around all the buttons and switches to highlight all of these details. To remove the excess wash after it dried, I dipped a flat paintbrush into Tamiya Enamel Thinner and dabbed away the extra paint. Assembling the cockpit is quite easy, and when everything is assembled there is quite a bit of detail to this interior. Even with the seated pilot figure, a lot of these details will still be visible.
I later discovered that the headrest for this particular Corsair was slightly inaccurate. So I decided to replace this section. And that meant I had to very carefully sand away the existing headrest that was molded into the bulkhead. The headrest was first carved out of styrene and temporarily superglued to some tape. I then applied some Milliput sculpting epoxy and I slowly began removing the excess and forming the general shape. Once I had the shape sculpted, I added a few bumps to act as wrinkles in the leather. Lastly, I took my hobby knife and I slowly cut a line around the headrest to replicate where the two sections of leather were stitched together. When the milliput had dried, I painted it black and added a gray wash to highlight the details. I then glued the headrest back to the model. Since I was building this Corsair parked, I was going to have the cowl flaps opened, and I wanted to add some extra details to the interior. Sadly though, a lot of the build footage just didn't turn out but I scratch built the levers on the cowl flaps out of styrene. To replicate the springs that keep the cowl flaps open, I bent some wire around a pin, and then I was able to cut these into very small springs. I then glued the small springs into the new cowl flap section. These details don't stand out a lot, but when you see them, it adds some fun realism to the rest of the model. I also decided to add some plumbing to the inside of the wheel bays. I added as much as I could as I was limited by the scale of this aircraft. I began by drilling holes where the wires would be placed. The next step was pretty fun. That was to thread the wires through the holes and gluing them in place. And after they were set, I trimmed down the extra wire. The wheels on the Corsair are pretty narrow, and the ones on the kit are too wide. So I sanded these down to a more accurate profile. I also wanted to try adding tread to the tires. So I cut a few hundred small squares out of styrene sheet, and I glued them to the tires using Mr. Cement SP. This was a really long process, but I got the tread on my tires. When I finished gluing the tires, I gently sanded out the sides so they'd be smoother and blend together with the rest of the wheel. I wanted to create some chipped paint and weathering to the Corsair, so I primed the parts with Mr. Surfacer 1200 and then I sprayed on a coat of Tamiya AS12 bare metal silver. This was my first time using this paint, and it's got a wonderful luster. I really wish I had tried this paint earlier. To create the chipped paint, I used a pointed brush and added Mr. Masking Sol Neo. I painted this onto the panel lines and sections of the Corsair that would get a lot of use. To 
To replicate the zinc chromate yellow, I used Tamiya XF4 yellow green and sprayed this onto the entire model. I really love this color and it's a shame I don't get to use it more often. And just like before, I painted on more Mr. Masking Soul Neo. This time I also painted on the silver sections so that I would have two layers of chip paint. Instead of a uniform navy blue, I decided I wanted a more varied color. So I started by painting a base layer of XF-17 Sea Blue. I then painted XF-8 flat blue into the panel sections, leaving the panel lines darker with the sea blue. I also painted the flat blue splotchy so I would have a mix of light and dark colors. And finally, I thinned down some Tamiya AS8 Navy Blue, about 50-50. I lightly painted it onto the model, gradually building up these paint layers, being very careful not to paint too much and cover the pre-existing paint. It's difficult to see now because the paint is still wet, but once it dried, I had a very nice mottled Navy Blue. Now that the blue was painted, I was ready to remove the masking soul Neo and reveal that chipped paint. I used a blunt cocktail stick and gently agitated the masking, and then I could remove the rest by wiping it away with my finger. Another method I've discovered, and this works really well for the more stubborn maskings, is to use a soft eraser and simply rub off the maskings from the model. This method works really quickly and doesn't damage the paint. I decided to spray on the diamonds to the tail and wings with XF2 flat white. This was because these areas had deep panel lines and I thought painting them would be a lot easier than trying to get the decals to conform to these deep surfaces. The decals were a bit on the thicker side, but they were beautifully printed. Once I had the decal in place, I took a cotton bud and gently rolled out the excess water and pressed around to get any air bubbles that might be trapped underneath. Once the decal was in place, I brushed on Tamiya Mark Fit Super Strong. This is my new go-to decal solvent. It's very strong and melts the decals down to conform better with the surface. Unfortunately, while the mark fit was still active, I accidentally damaged this decal with my brush. I'm gonna fix it by first gently sanding down the damaged section 
with some 600 grit Tamiya sanding sponge. Next, I've taped around the area, and now I'm going to repaint it. Now was the nerve-wracking part of removing the tape. I painted a gloss over the decals twice before I applied the tape to the model. This would help protect the decals from further damage. However, even with a gloss coat, I still need to be careful. Okay, I think I passed out there for a moment, but look at that. The decal is restored, and I can move on to the weathering. I wasn't going to be painting in the panel lines, but I really wanted to add a layer of dirt and grime to the finish. So, I used Tamiya enamel paints that were slightly thinned down and dotted them all over the blue sections of the model. For the various dots, I used light gray, sky gray, flat white, and dark yellow. I found that a blush makeup brush has the right profile to dab the enamel paints and blend all the colors together. This effect looks good, but it was a bit too heavy, so I would remove some of the paint until it was a more subtle layer. I used Mr. Just super glue to affix the landing gear to the model. I really like this glue as it's very strong and dries quickly. Here you can also see the treading on the tires. I think it looks pretty good, but it was a lot of work and I don't know if I'll be doing it again in the future. Now it was time to build and add the engine to the model. I was really pleased with how the inside of the cowl flaps looked now that they were painted green and given a wash. These details, as I had guessed, are difficult to see, especially with the wings folded, but once you notice them, they really stand out. The Moto Tug was a really fun and simple build. It didn't take too long to put together, and for me it was a real bonus to the model kit. And it looks really great towing that Corsair. I painted the Tug with XF66 light grey, and added a little bit of dark grey panel wash to highlight some of the edge details. I kept this build fairly simple compared to the Corsair. And that wraps up this video of the F4U-1D Corsair. This has been a really fun project, and I liked building this kit so much that I've actually got another Tamiya Corsair in the stash ready to be built. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Until next time, this is Rebels of Cloud 9, signing out.
you like the model in this video and you want one for yourself, then you need to do yourself a favor and visit sunwardhobbies.ca. Sunward Hobbies is one of the best modeling stores in North America. They have a fantastic and dedicated team that knows the ins and outs of your hobby needs. They work hard to keep their website and store up to date with the latest and newest model kits and modeling related products. And be sure to follow them on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. They post regular updates so you can easily keep up with the newest and latest stock. And if you are in the Mississauga area, do yourself a favor and stop by their store and see their huge selection of inventory for yourself. But for the rest of you outside of Mississauga, visit www.sunwardhobbies.ca today and say hello to your newest and favorite hobby shop.